Welcome to Nightclub Guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. Now it's been a solid six months at least since I've swapped over to the SSLS, and I've done several events out on the off-road, and I've driven it thousands of miles. And uh, I think I have a pretty good bearing to give you guys an honest review of how the system has run, and if I would actually continue recommending it over the MSD 6014. As you guys know, this is a 1975 Dodge W100 5. 3 LS with an R150 manual transmission and a Ford 8.8 rear differential. So it's a very light duty truck, very easy to drive. Carburetor that's currently on it is a 750 vacuum secondary carburetor. And as for the ignition coils, I'm actually running the the Daytona Sensor Smart Spark ignition coils. These are like an LS2 style of ignition coils just because I do want a little bit of uh, room for improvement and trust me they made a really big difference and I'll go into that a little bit later. So I have the system mounted on the inside of my firewall and this is actually going to be my first complaint and that is the harness that comes with the system and I got the larger harness is too short so I've actually have it double sided taped to my firewall and the harness I have to make a new hole for it here to feed the wires correctly my MSD 6014 used to come out through this hole right here run up through here and then I used to have it up here in my glove box and then the harness used to come up through here this this was the whole point of me building this glove box was to have my module right here so now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to make an extended harness or extend the wires of this harness and move the system up on top. Does that affect anything? Not really. Does it bother me at all? Kind of, because people tend to kick it. You guys can see I've got the connector for the tuning cable and it kind of dangles here, but people like kind of kick it when they're driving, riding passenger, so that's kind of annoying. As I've mentioned in a previous video, this harness is actually a little bit thinner compared to the MSD harness because it contains less sensors. For example, the harness doesn't come with the connector for the coolant temperature sensor, but it does come with the connector for the map sensor. So you guys can see my map sensor is actually dangling right here off the side of the carburetor. And I've got a line going to it as well. i got to clean this up fairly soon, but today is not that day. I've got the map sensor hooked up to one of my vacuum plugs up on the front of the carburetor. But I've actually got the map sensor turned off on the uh, timing map on the SSLS software simply because I didn't want to take the time to actually build a full vacuum based timing map. So what I've done instead, I've actually built a custom one where it goes like 13 degrees to start and then after like 2500 or 3000 RPMs, it goes to 28 degrees and then from that all the way to red lines, it'll stay at 28 degrees and then I just add a little bit here and there just so I have pretty good drivability and I've had no issues. I'm running 87 octane, no pinging, plugs look fine, everything is excellent so I know it's a solid timing map and I haven't had any issues. Power wise I haven't noticed any significant difference between bo one box and the other box because I ran basically the exact same timing map on the MSC 6014 and the SSLS but what I did notice and this was immediately after was I have the SS ignition coils where I used to have the standard truck coils and before this particular carburetor was jetted way too rich in the secondaries. We're, we're talking about where I would normally run 65s. This carburetor is actually running 73s in the back. So as soon as I would go into the secondaries, my engine would just start flooding like crazy. And it, now this was only because this was a fairly newish carburetor and I really didn't want to mess with it. So I just stay out of the secondaries. So one day I was racing my friend out on the freeway and I forgot that the secondaries were jetted super rich. And I floor it. And as soon as I floor it, I felt a little bit of hesitation. But the truck just kept pulling. And then I remembered that the truck was running super rich. I look at my AFR. Yeah, I'm like at 10 to 1, 10 and a half to 1 on the AFR. Super rich. But the truck, I know it was losing power, but it wasn't losing as much power as when it was when it was running the stock truck coils because I had done something similar about a couple weeks before. So what that tells me is that these coils actually were able to power through 10 to 1 
on a naturally aspirated engine and it i did end up winning that that street race and i actually left that guy in the dust sorry john one thing i did notice is that when i installed these coils you did have to mess with the box and you have to turn the dial to the correct setting because truck coils and ls2 coils have different um, dwell times you just have to make sure you're on the right setting so that way the computer knows how to fire them or else or else you are going to have a little bit of an issue i have a tuning video up on the channel where i actually go through the software itself and i actually set up my timing table later i did go back and edit it a little bit more and I grabbed I added some more timing on the bottom end but overall I really haven't immersed myself in the software simply because I do find that the software is a little bit clunky it looks a little bit dated it works and it does what it needs to do and I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever but it's not very nice to look at it's kind of ugly and it doesn't really entice me to want to play with it and learn all the features one thing I will say is that it does give me the option to set up both a two-step and a step retard for launch control and i'm going to be needing that fairly soon for when i do my race with the driveway engineer i'm also going to need to learn a little bit more about the software is because i'm actually going to be adding a little snail a little turbo right here and that's going to be feeding the carburetor and then i'm going to need to be adjusting timing based on boost pressure and that's where my map sensor is going to come back again i'm going to be switching over to a 3d timing map instead of the standard 2d timing map that I have right now. In the last six months or so, I've done some pretty extreme off-roading, some rock crawling, a lot of towing, a lot of daily driving, and stop and go traffic, and in the heat. Right now it's like 102 degrees outside, and then earlier in the winter I was actually off-roading with the hood off in the winter while it was snowing in December, and I still had no issues whatsoever. So I know the system is running at its 100%. I haven't had any issues whatsoever, and I'm super happy that I made the switch. So definitely recommend this one to anybody looking to install it. If you're looking for a super nice tuning software that has all the bells and whistles, probably not for you. But if you want something dead nuts reliable, go ahead and grab the, yourself the SSLS. I was able to work out a small deal with the people at Daytona Sensors. So if you guys use code NIGHTRENCHER at checkout, you guys will get free shipping on all of your orders that have to do with the SSLS. You guys know that my Instagram is always available to ask questions. If you guys need help with your carburetors, with your SSLS stuff, with your regular LS stuff, whatever, just go ahead and drop me a message. I always respond. So that's about it. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.